Adjustment or up more or less or whatever. Otherwise, is there a motion to approve them as circulated? So moved. So moved. We have a, first, a motion to second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 There you go. Okay. Um, well, you can. You better report on those other two things you've got down there. That are Okay, uh, we are in desperate need of a fundraising chair to uh, help us with the fundraising uh, factor money for the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, and this is, we do this at the uh, stores, stop and shop, and uh, at uh, Boys Brothers. And the chair would kind of organize this and uh, kind of keep track of the uh, assignments, making sure that we're covered. We alternate weeks. We can't do two weeks at Stop and Shop or, or at the house, but we, we need a person to come forth and do this. The form is up here. We got all the forms. We have the forms and we have the, the uh, we have the, the routines that have been followed in the past year, so that, that would be very helpful. But if someone would if seriously consider that, no, if someone would be willing to do that, would be a better word to do that. That would be very, would be very, very helpful. We also need a secretary. This is our secretary <laughs> right here. We need a replacement. Uh, we need a replacement. Please. <laughs> Repair. We've also made a, we had a kind of offer to our speaker last month, didn't you, Brenda? And a uh, uh, good friend uh, who spoke, our uh, author friend, he declined. Marty declined. Yeah, Marty declined. I'd like to also introduce uh, new, new members, believe it or not. We're pretty uh, sparse today, but Ed Rorton has been doing extra. A great job. He's brought in uh, Alan Goldstone. These are people who don't pay their dues. Harry Golding, Michael Connor, Jerry Resnick, Mo Ray, Mike uh, Seagrove, and Kevin Sheehan. She. she I'm sorry, she. Are any of those, those members here today? The, the names I just read. Probably in the golf. This, this, this is a golf group, which is great. They bumped up our numbers, which We'll report on it in just a bit. So, uh, anything else? Ed, Ed, Ed is here. Ed is here. Ed, Ed, oh, thank, Ed, thank you for thank you. Yeah, Ed, would you say something? Would you like to say say something yes, about your efforts? Uh, well, thank you for having me. Um, looking forward to being a member of the association, and I'm on a mission uh, to bring in more members here because I think this is a great organization and. Uh, uh, my mission at Southport, where I live, is to get all my golfing friends that are of age, which 100% are, <laughs> uh, to come here and join the club. And, uh, I'm, I've been in the golf business all my life, um, and uh, I would be happy to um, organize uh, golf trips, events for uh, the men's senior club here. And uh, so uh, my mission this year is to bring in more members. There's a lot of guys that uh, haven't signed up yet that will. Great. But I expect uh, to have at least 50 more members, um, and that's my mission is to get these guys to sign up. Very it's good. It's only $20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would like just to make one quick comment about our sound system, which we don't have, uh, that doesn't work very well. Uh, Lynn Waterman is working on that now with the, with the 
outfit from uh, Falmouth and they're going to try to fix the home or to replace the unit. But obviously in this time, it takes, it takes so much time to order parts and just try to get your car repaired or whatever else it is. It's just been bad, but we need to have a sound system. We're gonna work on even a portable handheld something or other for the next month. We're going to have the high five and we're going to have uh, 13 uh, students, I think here, that'll be tell nine or 10, whatever the number is that are gonna be here. I'd like to have them be heard. They'll be televised, but it'd be nice if everybody uh, could be heard. So we're gonna, we're gonna work on that for uh, December 5. Anything else for the no, no. Okay, I'd like to turn to the treasury report, please. There's not enough money. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the new dues, our current available balance is twenty-one ninety-four. It's a nice improvement to what it was. Um, we are I am collecting checks for the high five luncheon, and uh, I invite you to pay. And apart from that, if we, <coughs> if we agree on what they're going to get, where to pay us, so we don't no, have to do it. We didn't. We, uh, one of the other things that we will, will be working on, at least the board will, is the charitable contributions. We have each year made some charitable, charitable contributions to certain organizations. The primary one being that the uh, senior center, we want to certainly keep that $500 going. But we want to, we'll have to, we're going to kind of wait and see what we have. But it does settle that we can offer to the other people as well, too. But with the work that Ed's doing and all, this will help. So every year, we, like last year, we gave $100 to a number of other um, you know, different organizations. But we're, we'll work on that. Great. Uh, I'd like to go down now, now uh, please, for the program update and trips, etc. Yeah, we, uh, as many of you know, we had a trip planned for Mass Maritime Academy. Uh, unfortunately, we had to cancel out at the last minute uh, because we ended up with only three people. And I know uh, we did have about seven or eight signed up, but for really some very valid reasons, some dropped out at the last moment. So we canceled out, and uh, the hard part here is these people at Mass Maritime and other organizations we go to go to a lot of work and effort to kind of line up speakers and so on. So. Uh, we had the same problem with Patriot Place. Blood was running that, and we ran into a situation that some canceled out at the last minute, and so we had to cancel that out too. So there's been discussion um, on the board here about that we won't have events unless we get 10 people to sign up. Um, in the past, we've gotten 20 to 30 at times, but uh, we just, I think the, the virus, COVID virus, has held people back from events like that. So we do want to get uh, that going again. Um, I now want to just briefly uh, introduce our speakers. Uh, anything else you want to add on? No. no. Okay. Three. Um, we've had in the past the uh, Heroes in Transition speak to us, and it's one of these organizations we give money to. Uh, and that's why we want to raise more and more money here. Um, and I'm really pleased that they're joining us today to tell us about the excellent work they do. They're located here in Ashby for the veterans and for their families. Uh, this is especially relevant as we honor our veterans this month on November 11th. So, and that's why we got someone to speak, an organization that does work with veterans. I know that the club has many veterans, including we have one who was a bomber, not pilot, a bomber uh, navigator in World War II. So we have a number from Korea, Vietnam, and so on. And how many here are, are veterans? Just raise your hand, just get an idea. So uh, we, we cover a lot of wars. Um, I'd like to introduce Cindy Jones, who is a co-founder. Uh, Cindy, uh, and you will hear, her son was killed in combat in Afghanistan. And as a result, she set this organization up with her husband. Uh, it's a great organization. You'll hear more about it in a few minutes. Um, Cindy had 33 years teaching and uh, started Linfield Mass uh, after receiving her master's in reading education from the College of New Rochelle. Uh, she became a reading specialist working in Katona Lewisburg, Lewisboro School uh, District in northern Westchester, New York. 
the love for teaching, directed her into researching, reading, assessment, and with this expertise, she has presented workshops and seminars on the national, state, and local levels. Also, Jill Blanchard is here. Uh, Jill is a graduate of Bard College and uh, in uh, Great Barrington, uh, Massachusetts. She fo focused on post-traumatic studies before earning a master's degree in education at St. Mary's College in Minnesota. So I think she's glad to be here so she doesn't have those cold winters. Uh, her father served in the Coast Guard, her family served in the Army and the Marine Corps, so she has got a passion for military veterans. She received the Grace Snow Community Service Hero Award in 2015, and also a team captain for 2017, 2017 Ruck 4 HIT Relay, which I don't know much about. Is that a, a relay around here? It is, it's a race that they put on. Um, the executive director puts it on, and she, is everybody comfortable with the mask? Oh yeah, what are you talking? Okay, okay. <laughs> so she, um, they have 15, no well, they had, Eight teams, they went through all 15 towns with a rucksack on their backs, or we did, um, nine people. So you'd run three miles, get in the van and sit, and then run three miles, get in the van and sit. And so it, it was quite the <laughs> race, but they raised a lot of money doing that. And now we're involving the entire community in trying to do that, but also <clears throat> different events. So if you can't run, you ride your bike. <laughs> I'm approaching 50, so I'm not running anymore, so I can paddleboard, I can do any kind of activity. You can walk, you can do anything. So it's open to a lot of more community members. When is that, it's, it's um They're gonna do the relay race in May, mm -hmm. I believe, April, May, and then they're gonna do the big community one in October okay. this year. So. Well, if, any, if yeah. anyone here wants to run. <laughs> <laughs> you can walk, you can walk. walk. You can walk. Uh, For here is a transition. Yes, what? for Heroes in Transition, for the organization. Well, yeah. Heroes in the Transition. Yes. You said it's a feather. Yes. It <laughs> H, yeah, well, the abbreviation is uh, HIT. So anyway, I'm going to turn it right over to Joyce, and, and you can Thank you. explain. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, can I remove this? Yes. I, I just, um, excuse me. First of all, can you just put the board up? We're going to circulate the board for the lunch. If anybody who December wishes to. December 7, one more time. And yes. There's a pen attached. Okay. Secretary is uh, behind times today. Oh, yeah. Um, this is not mm. my first rodeo here. So I am, let me, let me start by saying how grateful I am and how grateful all of us in Heroes in Transition um, are to you because every year we, we, we receive donations from you. You have supported us. And when um, when we first start a, a charity, um, it's quite a challenge. Um, I dragged my husband from place to place, knocked on doors, had doors closed to us. but um, And then there are certain people, certain groups, certain businesses, certain clubs <coughs> that support you. And you are the ones that have supported us throughout the year. So I am so definitely um, grateful to you. And, and of course, there's Bill here who has supported us with Christ the King also. So um, my gratitude and all of our gratitude for Heroes in Transition is, is there, so thank you. Um, sometimes I will refer to Heroes in Transition as HIT because it's an acronym. Um, I don't know if you know um, Richard um, Brothers. I don't know if anybody knows Richard. He was the president of United Way. When we first got started, he took it, my husband and I under his wing and um, guided us through it. And, and I made the comment that we were called HIT. And he just looked at me and came back and said, that's a terrible name to, have a, to have, call it a charity. And I immediately defended it by saying that is because our veterans are hit very hard when they come home. And he backed right down and totally understood where I am. So all of you who have served and those who support our veterans, you know my heart goes to you because being going into the military is, is a tough job. And, and the minute you sign your name, 
you serve and you're willing to give your life. And some do. And some come home. And when they come home, they're not the same. A lot of them are not the same. So to you who have served, and like you said, um, many wars, my heart goes out to you because you have seen things that our civilians will never see and will never understand. So with that, uh, my husband and I started our mission, as was said, we lost Eric. Eric was a helicopter pilot. He loved his crew. Um, and that brotherhood and sisterhood and military is so strong that we decided to continue his mission. So we have we have four parts to our mission. And, um, and I have to say, we have evolved so much since the last time I was here to talk to you, which was five, six years ago, maybe more. Um, we have developed, and it's amazing how you, how everything evolves. When we first got started, well, our mission was service dogs, transitional support group, financial assistance, and home modification. And through the years, it, what was what became our little niche was the service dog. Um, people seem to men and women coming back from combat, especially. From combat, they 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 couldn't get out of the house. They couldn't um, go to a store. They couldn't sit in a restaurant. Um, they sat with their back to the to the to the wall, watching all the entrances, and they, it was very difficult for them. So service dogs became very big with us, um, and we did an awful lot of service dogs. But as time evolved, we found out that a lot of them, having a service dog for a year or two or three, they became. Um, accustomed to going out, and the service dog still did its job, but the service dog became more of a pet. They, he was that support for them. But so as time went on, we decided, we found out that, um, and this is our mission, um, we, we just go through this very quickly. Um, we have developed so much and found that not only do dogs help service men and women who are suffering with PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome. But we also found that horses do it. So we, we started getting involved with the stable. Um, we are now in Camp Linden, the Alliance stable there. Um, and it's, the setting is absolutely peaceful. And you feel like you're in New Hampshire in the cave. You have the lake. I don't, I'm sure you all know what Camp Linden is, where it is. Um, we developed equine programs for our, for our veterans, and it became very, very popular. And you could see a change with the men and the women. And we, we started with the children, um, bringing the families in. And all of a sudden, children whose parents were deployed, who didn't know they were going to see their father, who wouldn't see their father and mother for a whole year. It was very hard for them. Um, and they're, they're living in a neighborhood where other children have their parents home, and then you have these military kids whose father maybe whose father is in Afghanistan or Iraq, and and for them to deal with with this this, this life of watching other kids having and enjoying their families and hear the anxiety, will I ever see my dad again? You know. So we brought these people in, these children and these families, these mothers and fathers in. And brought them to the horses, and all of a sudden you just saw, you just saw magic happening because the horses are our mirrors to our emotions. Um, there's something very special about being in the presence of a horse, just looking into their eyes, and these kids and, and mothers just just melted. The horse kind of understood, and there was a bonding with them, and not only with the horse, but then there was a bonding among the other children which became very magical and helped them get through it. But let me, let me go through my programs. Um, I am going to go through, Jill and I are going to go through, Jill is our um, secretary on our board. She is also our uh, marketing director. Um, we have grown so much. <laughs> we have now have a great team, an unbelievable team. So. Um, these are our programs that we have, and I don't, I suspect that you can't read them, but what we're going to do, Jill and I are going to go through the programs, and um, I'm going to start, I just started talking about families in transition, we call it FIT. 
Um, we are now, uh, we just did our ninth year with our families. And um, it's just, it, it's just an absolutely wonderful time for, for our families. And after they work with the horses, they do the equine therapy, they do the massaging, they do you know, the grooming, they, they learn all about the horse and they go horseback riding and then they have a meal. And every one of our programs that we have comes with a, a meal, comes with a dinner, a lunch, Food is very important in this organization. Um, and you, I'm going to say it, and I probably would be criticized, but Jesus' preaching was based around food so many times. So to me, food is, is essential. People relax when they eat. We bring people together. We bring the veterans together, veterans, spouses, families. We sit down and have a meal and we're relaxed. And, and so um, that's all part of all our programs. So once the families have their meal, then um, the program, the program, it goes on from Monday to Friday, late afternoon. It starts around 4.35 and it goes until 7. Um, and it's for a week. And it's a very popular program. Um, we, we can't book everybody that he signs up for it. We do it three weeks during the summer. So that is, um, it's just a magical time. Um, with that, we have, now <coughs> we have an equine warrior weekend just for veterans. Extremely powerful. These are veterans, most of them are veterans who have seen combat, veterans who are dealing with PTSD. Um, and we have them come on a Friday <coughs> afternoon, a late Friday afternoon. They sit, they, and there's an introductory, introductory part of it. They have their dinner. They sit around campfire. They talk. First thing Sunday, Saturday morning, being military, they're up, by, they're up before 6. They have their breakfast at 6. Down there, they stay at the Camp Legion. Each one is assigned to his own cabin by the mm -hmm. water. And then they go from breakfast, they go straight to the stables, which is a short walk up the hill. And then they are, then they spend that complete day with the horses. They are, they're, the horses are put in a corral. There are no saddles on them. The horses are lined up. The veterans are, are together and they're told, go into the, go into the arena and, and, and pick a horse, relate to a horse. And seriously, it's amazing to watch because the horses sense and they relate to certain people and so all of a sudden you have a veteran and a horse bonding. And that horse stays with that veteran through the program continues on. But um, so they, that's how they get their horse. They're with that horse the whole weekend. And with that program, they have the, the veterinarian who is part of the stables, the Lion Stables, is, is a holistic veterinarian. So she does, she teaches our veterans how to massage a horse how to do Reiki on a horse. And I don't know if you know what Reiki is, but Reiki is an energy um, uh, program where, where you actually, it's wherever there is a blockage in the body, it's related to something that's happening to you. So you can actually, if you do Reiki on a horse or on a person, you can actually, a person, a train can actually feel the heat of where that energy is blocked and our veterans are taught how to do that with the horses, and all of a sudden, horses may be a horse may be uptight, but once they have that reiki, you, you actually see the horse relax. So there is a there is a connection, and our veterans are taught that. And in order for them to do it, they themselves have to relax themselves, and that's what it is all about. Is that mindfulness? Is that bringing that peace and meditating and saying, okay, I'm living in the now. I'm working with the horses, and it gives them our veterans a, an opportunity to to control themselves, to deal with with life right now at that time. So the program goes on. It's all day Saturday, and it's a tough day. They do horseback riding also. It's dinner, and then after dinner, campfire, cabin, Sunday morning, up breakfast at six, right out with the horses again, and then it. Foods on Sunday afternoon with, with lunch. Um, and it's a, 
it's a very um, therapeutic weekend for a lot of our veterans. We only do eight to 10 veterans at a time. We add anything anymore. Well, first of all, we are limited on horses, but that is the size of the group. So what happens is not only are they bonding with the horses, now you have veteran bonding with, with veterans, which is you're creating, you're creating community, which is what the goal is with Heroes in Transition. So that's our equine program. Then we have, <laughs> so there's a couples bi-monthly program where, as you can see, they do sailing lessons. Um, the goal is there's a lot of, there's a high divorce rate amongst couples in the military. Trying to keep couples together, a lot of times it's hard. I know we had one couple come to a program and they had three children and the expense of trying to get babysitters and everything else to, to even come to something like that was difficult. So they came to one of our family programs first, and then they were able to come to a couples program and just spend two hours together, away from stress and family and everything else. Some of this here on the Cape is um, we need to, we have such a high um, population of National Guard. So for your active duty full time that are, you know, in on a base or being deployed and coming back to a base, as Cindy was talking, you have children and spouses that support each other at the base. It's a little different here because there's not a lot, of, nobody lives on the base. So they have their own jobs. Some of them are full time here, but when they deploy, like Cindy was saying, a lot of these spouses are in the neighborhood with other spouses, but they're not in the military opposed to maybe living on a base where you have that spousal support. So we're providing a lot of that as well. I don't want to touch your computer if you have. And then um, we also have a couple weekend retreats and those are key to keeping some of these couples together. I've witnessed the tail end of one recently where there was a Coast Guard couple, his wife had uh, stage three, I think, cancer. They came up, he was, um, position down in Guam at one of the, the, the best billets he could have had. They came up here and he was struggling with some things. They came to our couples retreat and they were able to bond with people they hadn't met before, get some help that they needed, meet people um, that were like-minded, having similar issues. Uh, we have our cares, we have two different types of retreats and one of them I'm going to have Cindy talk about is Clyde Angel, and he's an army chaplain that comes up and speaks to um, our couples and runs them through really the difficult challenges of marriage. Uh, he does everything from learning how to communicate. It's, it's all around communication and learning how to communicate and giving skills and things like that. So you said it all. Okay. <laughs> I think the spring retreat. And the spring retreat is we very similar, but we do some different kinds of activities. We've done ropes courses where they go and do trust um, falls and they do team building activities. But again, there's the therapeutic piece of it as well, where we take people through a lot of communication skills and learning how to relate to each other on different levels and then um, we have our couples facilitator who are an army and spouse uh, couple. Uh, he's actually currently a Barnstable police officer. He served in the army and they have quite a story that they share with our couples. And so there's an immediate bond and a trust there as well. So, yeah, I'll let you. Yeah. Uh, and then we do. Similar to the, the couples programs, we do a veteran monthly program. So this can involve, as you can see, um, we hire out boats and they go fishing. They get to do different activities. Um, I think there's a trail hike coming up. They did a bowling activity just to, again, bond veterans together. A lot of people retire and other people move on and they don't have the camaraderie that they had within the military. Kind of like what you do here, you know, you offer that that place where people can bond and make friends, and and it actually that's what really helps people. You know, you'll have 
people don't necessarily want to go to a psychologist right away, but we'll have these veterans get together, and if there's something going on in their life or they're having a struggle, they'll tell one of their fellow veterans, and then the veteran will come to our facilitator, John. John will talk to them, and if we need to assist them and refer them out to get some help, we have a, a psychologist um, that we work with, and she's wonderful. She's a holistic psychologist, so we have, and then if, if there's more need, you know, we'll get them where they need to go. So that's kind of how we, we operate with that. All right, I'll let you take over oh. the dogs. <laughs> um, when Jill was talking, um, and I'm so glad she mentioned our psychologist, um, she is part of, a, she's a facilitator to some of our programs too. And it, it's important when you have a program, when you have different programs, um, and the facilitators will talk to, to, to veterans who are having different problems with their spouses. They will relate to them because they're, they're connected to them. They all share the same background. Um, I just wrote about compassion, and part of having compassion is being willing to walk into someone else's dark side and helping them through it. Um, so it's very important that everybody who works with us have, have that background so they have a complete understanding of what military life is. But we also have um, a licensed psychologist working with us. So that safety net is provided for them because they can, a parent, a, a spouse, a couple can attend our program and a spouse will come and say, I, I just can't deal it, you know, we're having a hard time, we're having financial problems or we're having this, I just can't, you know, this is happening. Our psychologists can take work with them privately. We provide that counseling also along with it. Um, I talked about our canine program in the very beginning. This is how we really got on the map with our dogs. Our canine program has been revamped and revamped, and as we evolved, we found out that you know through time, the dogs are the dogs are a one on one. But what we're finding that what really works is that brotherhood, bringing back that brotherhood and sisterhood, like Jill said, which you provide here. When our military and your veterans, you know that once you get discharged, all those, your brothers on the combat or your brothers in arms, your brothers and sisters, they're spread all over. And, and getting together with them is, you know, there's a piece there that, that's missing. And that's what Heroes in Transition, that's what we're trying to do is bring that brotherhood Re, revisit that brotherhood and, and provide that. So the dog program is a one-on-one, -on -one, but now we see that that brotherhood, building that brotherhood is great. We, we have, we now, we do not do the training. The VA has passed a, a bill that they will, they will um, finance dogs that are special ADI certified, which is American International Dog. And if, and so, in order to be have a dog that's trained, it has to be an organization that's recognized by them. And the only one in Massachusetts, I think there's a woman up in Gloucester, but the only one in Massachusetts that has, that can provide true service dog is NEEDS. So, um, and I don't know if you can see it. So we, a veteran or a doctor, our veteran will come to us who is under the doctor's care, will come to us and, and ask about um, getting a service dog. We will vet them and then send them up to needs. And needs is in Princeton, Mass. Beautiful, beautiful establishment. And um, they, they will make the decision whether to give a dog. And if they choose to give to one of the veterans we recommend, then we make, um, we, we, we send on a, a nice check to them um, as, as a gratitude and to help them with their, with their expenses. So canine problem program is still there, but it's, it's kind of a little bit moving on. And we now, with dogs come, do unfortunately, God didn't make dogs live very long. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is what we're, we're seeing now. Some of our service dogs um, that we, we've given out have, have gone to another route. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult for, for these veterans to, to lose their um, and that's why having our transitional support groups, having our veteran support group, having our couples and having retreats and, and other programs, this fills in, tries to help that, that hurt, that gap of losing a loved one, a loved dog. 
Um, um, Jill mentioned the spouse program. So this is so, um, she mentioned uh, Kristen and John as our facilitators. Funny story, um, when we wanted to hire, hire, when we wanted to talk to, to John about being a facilitator, he came with his wife, Kristen. And she sat down and Nicole, who's our, who is our director, uh, executive director, Nicole and I are talking to John to see if John would take on this, this job, being a facilitator for veterans. And his wife is sitting there and she looks at looks at the two of us and goes, Well, what about the spouses? So now, so that's why we got a spouse program. Um, and and actually the men are a little hard to come out in groups. So um, the way around getting our veterans was working with the spouses. It was the wives that would come to us and then the wives would bring the husbands and then it just started to fall. So um, there's a mentality that you well know with veterans is like, I'm okay, take care of my brother. And we heard that all the time. So spouses were, were good for us to bring in. So we have every other month, we have the spouses game together and it's very important. And unfortunately it's mostly women, it's mostly women, but the spouses, the women can talk to each other. How do you deal with this? My husband's doing that. How, how, and so that helps each other. That's therapy too. So the spouse program is very strong. They, they get to go, sometimes they go to Boston on an excursion. They do the North End or they do P-Town. Um, there's always, every other month, there's always a fun excursion for them to do and a meal and they come together. And then the following month is the couples. The couples get together. So um, very important. You're building a community, and a community in a sense of wanting to belong. You know that through this group. Um, and also the monthly family programs. A lot of our military, especially our military, our National Guard, but we also have um, a big group of um, um, Coast Guard. And um, they're here in the Northeast, a lot of our military. Northeast is not a cheap place to live. Um, living expenses are high here, and, and they're living on a national scale. So a lot of our wonderful op our opportunities here on the Cape, uh, you know, taking in all the wonderful advantages that the Cape has to offer, some of them don't have the money to do it. It's, it's just another added, added expense, it's another burden. So we now, every month, take our, do something with our families. And uh, you know, in the summertime, it can be fishing, it can be Paddle boarding, I mean, it can be kind of taking them out in the water. In the fall, it can be mount, uh, apple picking. In the wintertime, we collaborate with them at the art center and we bring the families in and they have art together. So it's always, and, and during COVID, it was, you know, we, we get nervous at COVID because nobody was going out. We were more busy during COVID because every week there were three activities going. And every month, the families, we would have, we would have a, a um, a scavenger hunt and, and then and then at the end of the scavenger hunt there'd be a knock on the door and we had pizzas delivered to each house so even though they weren't together they were zoomed together yeah. and and it just brought the children together brought the families and we did this with couples and we did this with spouses and we provided um, an opportunity on one night to bring some veterans together of our spouses to talk about their goals and um, so we were, um, so that's our family program. You want to talk about Reboot or you want to? Yeah. That's, your, that's your baby. Um, <laughs> we did our research and we do, we, we keep up with what the needs are. We do our research and we found out that the vet, female veterans were being overlooked. Female veterans have totally different needs than a male. Um, and um, they're in a male world, so it's a challenge for them. And it's a challenge for them to bring up families, to have children, and to serve. So what we put together was a program <coughs> called Reboot. Like your computer, Reboot, shut up. Reboot, gather your, your energy together, and then start going. And this program was deals with building resiliency among the females, um, or anybody. We'll, we'll get to the men. <laughs> the, men the male program is coming. It's just a little bit, um, just getting it out there. Um, and, and what we do is, it's, it's like a five week course. 
and teach them how to do Reiki. We, we do Reiki with them. We teach them med uh, meditation. We talk about peacefulness and how to get that. And amazing that when you put people together in a room, and we not only have female veterans, we have female spouses together. It's just amazing to watch the bonding. Because once they, they're there, knowing that each other have certain needs, that trust level just goes up so high. And in the military world, it's that trust that is so, in, so important. Once you build that trust, then you have developed a brotherhood. And that's basically, that's our, our, our reboot program. Um, we also do a financial, we all do financial assistance. Um, we, provide, um, we provide gift cards on the base. They're given to chaplains, they're given to home uh, family relationships, directors, anybody on base who's having a financial issue um, can go to them and they get a gift card. Stop um, they're, 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 they're handed a, right, um, stop and shop. Um, at Christmas time, we put together boxes of food. We work with um, Guaranteed Fresh over in Hyannis. They're wonderful to work with. We, we, the, the boxes are good sized boxes. There's lots of food, fresh vegetables, uh, fruits, um, nuts, um, cold, uh, salamis and, and meats that can, be, that can be given. And then we give a gift card to Stop and Shop so that they can buy meat for the holiday and for a dinner, a $50 gift card goes in there for desserts. Um, so that's distributed to people on the base who are, who are in need of, of that. Um, did I, miss up? Did I miss anything? Okay. So, in closing, I'm going to, Jill put this together for us, which is just beautiful because you want to talk about this is how, where are certain programs, under what categories would fall under? We just categorize the, the programs that, <coughs> in three categories strengthening relationships, healing individuals and families, and empowering individuals. So, um, under strengthening relationships, it's the veteran monthly program, the um, couples bi monthly, the spouse program, the family monthly program, and, and the retreats. And then healing individuals that comes with the animals, with the dogs and the equine, and then empowering individuals. We do the reboot course. And then we didn't talk about yoga and wellness mm -hmm. on the base, and it was halted during COVID, but with trauma studies and the things I know, I also know that if you can get people practicing something new when they're young, so they have something out there called student flight. So we, we do a yoga class for people that are out there, but also the young people that are coming through, they're usually there on the weekends for their drill and they're just their students. They haven't gone to schools or anything yet. So they um, started doing yoga with them and they're, you know, not really that interested and they're like, oh, this stinks and this is this. And, but by the end of it, they're realizing that it actually helps with stress. It helps with their physical bodies because they have to do a lot of PT. And they're learning a new skill that, you know, they can take for the rest of their lives. So that's pretty much what we did. Up to the past few years. <laughs> it's a lot. Okay. So this is what you have supported in the past and it's out there. Our programs are open to everybody, every military veteran or military family. Um, there's no age limit on, on, on who you help. If there's, if there's a need and you want to be part of the group or take part in any of our programs, it's open. If you know anybody, please keep us in mind. So, yes. Yes, is your program uh, specifically uh, detailed toward the state of Massachusetts? For the Cape? He's in or the state of Massachusetts. State of Massachusetts. Um, it's basically, um, <laughs> we're basically here on the Cape. Right. Um, we, our finance, our, our support, our money comes from charities, from you people, come from donors, come from businesses. Um, we do grants, but we take no um, government money. Um, um, we don't apply for government grants because You've seen our programs. Our programs are kind of like out of the box. Um, we have that freedom to to bring in equine, bring in horses. We have that freedom to you know to do art. We have you know to go places. So um, so 
we're we're open to to that, but our 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 work is dependent upon groups like yours and and, and different companies and businesses. I guess what I was really asking is, if, are you open to applicants throughout the state, um, or just to people on the Cape? Um, we extend beyond the bridge. It's hard for our our we're here. We, we know, we, our people are here, our facilitators are here. For us to go um, to Western Mass, we wouldn't have our connections there. Um, but we, somebody comes we, here, I think you said. We work with the base, the joint base, um, and we've taken people from the base. They can come. Um, they come to our programs. But our programs are here. Our retreats are here. Um, we... <coughs> It's mostly because we're, we're, we're a local organization. We're mostly mostly Cape Cod. There's a percentage of us, percentage that goes over the bridge, but not that big of a percentage because we're, we're really local. Jim? I, were you asking though if somebody could come from Western Mass to one of our programs? If, is that what you were asking? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you're saying like, could they come from? We would welcome place? people to come. Yeah. And we have, during our couples retreat, We've had, um, we had a delightful couple that came from Revere, somebody from the, the North Shore. Um, we have people who attend from Rhode Island. But um, it's a long drive for them, too. But, but yes, we, um, we have that ability. We, we can. But when we apply for grants, we, we actually, the number is like 80, 85% of those that we serve are right here <coughs> at Cape Cod, um, and we, um, Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard, especially the Coast Guard. Um, those those who are serving on the Coast Guard, who are, are those in Nantucket, <coughs> um, are kind of, it's hard for them because they're limited being on the island. They don't have the money to come over to the mainland. So um, that's a small group over there that, that really needs a lot of support to bring them here to, because they're limited, they're limited on a national scale. So, um, so we do do the islands and the Cape mainly. Yes. How many veterans do you have in your organization? Well, who, who work for us? No, that are that we serve. That you serve. Oh, yes. Our database. It's kind of because we're on the base and we give. You know, it's hard to to to. It's hard to come up with the number, but um, I'd say yearly. Over two thousand couples and with spouses, yeah. um, but they come and go. But we can get you the actual data because we're working currently with Northeastern. I just had a call. We're working with Northeastern with a couple of their data analytics groups for their capstone projects for their master's degrees, and I just had a call with them the other day, yesterday, and that's what they're going to do an analysis of our participants. So we have, so Kristen talked to them as well, and they, they'll have, we have all of our sheets of all of our data for all of our participants and our registration. So they're gonna compile all that information for us. Great. And then, but on an average, I think we averaged it out over 2,000. When we do the cards and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, what's, what's interesting is that we were getting new people, new couples yeah. coming in, coming in. The, the the ones who have been with us stay with us. Yeah. And and what has happened is that, and I just I just finished my we're we're having our gala on Saturday, so I just finished my speech because the theme of our gala is stronger together, but to me it didn't didn't quite hit the hit the mark for me. It's family, and what's happening is that that the ones that we have been servicing stay with us. They bring on new people, so it just grows and grows. But it, it, it's amazing because what you have, bottom line, is you have that brotherhood and sisterhood. You have that family, that family feeling. So, um, and you know, if you please contact us later if you want the numbers. And, and I, Northeastern is, um, like Jill said, is doing that research for us. And, and um, so it's very special for me because my father-in-law, my husband, and my son are all graduates from Northeastern. So for Northeastern to take on our charity is very special, and, and they're doing the analysis for us. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. 
I'm not a veteran, so I you know don't have any experience with this. But uh, from a moral standpoint, the Veterans Administration, which is federally funded, mm -hmm. should in fact be taking care of the veterans. Mm -hmm. <coughs> to me, it's strange that somehow we have to have charity organizations do this as opposed to the federal government, the Veterans Administration. The taxpayers need to be picking up the tab. You and and I'm going to because um, we work with. We're connected to the VA, um, and only one of our board members is a psychiatrist there. Mm -hmm. um, and in defense of them, there are so many men and women coming back with PTSD, so many needs, so much sickness from things they've been exposed to that the VA is inundated and they don't know how. The thing with the VA is that, and probably one of the reasons why we don't get involved is that. Yeah. They take the clinical ones. They take the ones that have financial needs and, and, and you know medical needs. We can't do that. What we can do is the holistic end of it. Um, there, because the numbers are so huge. Uh, I, uh, the Veterans Administration basically is not given the resources to deal with the size of the problem. Well, it comes down to. In other words, the government just doesn't want to spend the money. Well. Which is one of the reasons it's going through the red tape. It's not that they don't want to spend the money. Actually, our couples program that we started, mm -hmm. that retreat, I mean, we we sent four people down to Florida to get trained, and the training was called a program called CARES, and it's an acronym for partners, and it's all about communication. That was presented to the VA. The VA bought into it. The VA developed a program, so the VA is trying to get out there and it's called soul to soulmates um and they are trying to there's just so many men and women to serve that they they you know they they're trying they're mm -hmm. trying to get out there but here again too we have red tape mm -hmm. this is why we Everything don't the government does is red tape yeah. well i i don't want i don't want to i don't want to leave you with that yeah. um i i this is one reason why we have we don't go after government <clears throat> right now, we don't go after government fund, government funding because we we want that freedom to to do and, and to keep like Northeastern now is, is coming on board with us. They can do the research for us. How do we affect? We send out evaluations after all our programs so we can evaluate. So we have testimonials like the thing in the back there. Um, th there are testimonials at the back of these. So we 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 base our growth on the testimonials and evaluations. And once Northeastern comes in and, and really formalizes it and gives us statistics, then we're okay. Um, but we have that freedom to do it. If we were under control of the government, then, then we would, our hands would be tied a little bit too much. For, for We're a small, we're a small organization. We're, we're a logo, we're a Cape Cod foundation. Um, mm -hmm. And we try to service. And, we're servicing holistically. The VA will service the medical needs, the you know financial needs, and they you know they they're responsible whether you know you're on the seventy percent disability and that type of thing. It's very technical what the VA does. We don't have to do that. My goodness, <laughs> you would not need to be involved with any numbers. So, anyways, um, in defense of the VA, to think of the thousands and thousands. Of with PTSD, a lot of them are coming home with <coughs> cancer. They're exposed to the air. They're, they're sick. Their families are in need. And everything. There's a lot of other issues that the VA is dealing with. We have the ability to deal with the transitional support for here. The everyday support, we're, we're here with your wife, we're here with your children. So I, you know, the VA has their job. And what we're trying to do is, is that family feeling, that support. I, mean, I noticed that I served during the Vietnam era, mm -hmm. and um, there was a lot of survivor guilt for those no. who didn't make it. Do you see a lot of that in your organization? We have a few Vietnam um, veterans that come, and absolutely love it, love it, because what we, what we found, the veterans from Vietnam, who have been part of our group, and one of them's right here in Nashville, 
they they become they're they're the they're the old sages because what you've experienced is, is different. I like to think it's different today. And when you I, and that's my era, so I can speak personally about this. Watching it and how many and I know you all have it's totally different feel. And there's there's such a guilt on, on what 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 happened and um, during that time. So when we get a, a veteran who's in Vietnam. They just come in with the younger guys, and they just like open to them, and, and they have that understanding. You're an old sage to them. And I'll say, <coughs> how they have, I know that Nicole's brother had survivor's guilt. I know that there were a couple people. There was a young um, Anthony that was in Palusia, and he was sitting next to somebody that got killed, and he struggled for years. You know, and we got him for a piece. I think the outreach center helped him. Couple of organizations helped him, but he moved, finally could move on from that. But I know our executive director's brother, I think, was going to re up, right? Is that <coughs> And he yes, he was told they couldn't. But his people that went back over, many of them were killed. Most of them were killed. And so he, he received the first PTSD dog from Heroes to help him with that piece of it because he struggled pretty bad for survivor skills. From what Nicole has said too, so that was actually a huge help. And now he's, as Nicole would say, he has two children and a wife, and his PTSD dog has become a pet, and we made it through that piece of time for that as well. But it's not one of the, the healing factors during that era is to go down to Washington, to the wall, put your hand on a friend of yours who's been killed. That's very emotional. I agree. I got on my father's shoulders because my godfather was in Vietnam and he was a pilot and his brother for whatever reason it was stepbrother but they were just the two they were deployed at the same time and he got killed so we went I remember I took the rice paper and I I did that my parents took me down and so yes I understand that any of the questions here um I we do have brochures up here yeah that you can take with you so uh, a limited number, but I've made a whole bunch of these and one pager for the summer. So please help yourselves when you leave. And I'll turn it over to our chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Mission, using military terms, after the meeting is over. So don't don't leave. Oh, okay. So you can sit down. Okay. I think that's what happened now. We, do we have any other business that people would like, would like to bring up before we adjourn? I, I just want to mention, remember, uh, December 7th, ironically, the day of my father and I died, and they all remember December 7th for other reasons, of course. Uh, that's going to be our high five meeting here, and we will be being here, and we'll be uh, recording, and then we're going to out uh, to lunch uh, after. So. I hope that you'll be here. People have signed up. We have pretty well good signed up. Uh, so, okay, we can always use more. But if you don't want to do this, it's not too late to uh, to make this happen. Any other wives ones? Wives are invited to that. And wives are invited. Yes, wives. Yes. Do you have a form to fill out for people that you might want to ask to join? Is it a form that they could sign up? Yeah. Or uh, just uh, word of mouth. Well, they can, simplest may be to call me. Um, we don't have a form that travels around the countryside. But we have everybody who's, uh, who's it, obviously... It uh, really is an Jackson open to... Uh, first of all, there is a limit on the, on the room. And, um, you send an email out to the members? Pardon me? Have you sent an email out to all the members about... Oh, absolutely. It's at yeah, least two too. times wow. they've been told and okay. all this. So there'll be another one going in the next few days. Um, unless somebody volunteers to be secretary. <coughs> but um, do they, in the it's, it's not something that the general public can come. And we haven't got room for... No, I understand that. But I'm saying uh, on the email to the members, you have a question... Uh, are you able to come or you cannot attend? In other words, getting a response from your email, not just 
set it out without any um, <coughs> feedback from your members. Like you'd say, I like I like you to respond if you can make it return or if you can't make it return. So then you'd have an, a confirm that they read the email and they're responding to you. Yeah. I don't know what the way the new that the news the last couple of newsletters I think had. Uh, yeah, but I'm just saying. Make an the, impression. I'm, I'm saying that uh, you send the email out; it just sits there. Somebody may read it, may not. Uh, but the email, you send it out asking them to respond. Yes, sir. Yes, you, sir. No. Yes. Are you coming? Let us know. If you cannot make it, let us know so that at least you know that they read it in. Uh, if there's an interest in coming, then you can follow up and say, "Hey, I need to hear." Let me just make one comment about the meeting. With this, we're going to have a meeting here. There's no other space available in the uh, this facility for that meeting, and so we will have a meeting here. And uh, Lynn Waterman reminded me today that the capacity for this room is around 50, 55 at the most. So we 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 want to encourage everybody to come. We wishes to, but we do have a limitation in terms of. The numbers of people we can put in this group. <coughs> Are you worried about reaching that number? I, I hope we meet that number and beyond. But it's it's possible. We just already have people that are set up and paid for their meals, uh, so we have a pretty good count already. Yeah, we are. We're, we're doing pretty well on that. But I'll. I'll uh, well, yeah, the, the limit of this room is maybe fifty. The limit uh, for dinner for the lunch is forty six. Uh, well, we have to. Make Bigger room there, we need some more so the, e the email should say we have a limited number of 46. You're going to sign up to get it. We have to know. Well, we're very we're close. There were 13 of there are 10 students and three staff members <coughs> coming. Cool. Um, I'm just saying. Yeah, okay. Email if you're, I, I if you're more direct in getting yeah, a response yeah, yeah. as opposed to just good talk. Good talk. Yes. Very much. Okay. About the board. We're almost to the limit right now of this of this room right oh. now. Oh, Daniel Webster. Daniel Webster, sorry, forty-six. We're almost there, so we're doing great. We're doing quite well. Send an email and say we're, we're yeah. almost yeah. at our limit. Yeah. Okay, I'll work with uh, Berkeley yeah. on this. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Any other business? If not, uh, we would adjourn in, but don't go anywhere because we got the raffle to go to. So, all in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>